and Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Geek Bites Podcast. I'm Ramon Mejia. I'm Edgardo Costa. And every single week on the podcast, we bring you around the week's best geek and tech news. We discuss that news and of course anything else we happen to be interested in that week. And this week we're going to be talking about some interesting stuff including... Project Loon, Harry Potter AR, Hollywood Scandals. There's a lot of them this week. There are, yeah. <laughs> Disney and Fox, uh, the latest comic book movies, the movie trailer showdown, and much more. Yep, absolutely. And of course, a quick shout out to anyone who's watching in the live stream on Facebook. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, of course, we begin our show, though, like normal, with Geek News. Right this time. Okay, uh, first story, just a couple tech stuff that I thought was cool. Then we went into a bunch of, of course, Hollywood scandals and entertainment stuff. Uh, first story, though, is going to be about Project Loon. And no, that's not talking about your weird ant. Um, Project Loon is that weird kind of thing from Google where they were like essentially going to throw weather balloons up in the air and give people Wi Fi access, like basic um, internet access. And, and, and they've actually done it in Puerto Rico. Uh, they're providing mobile data to more than 100,000 people in Puerto Rico because their entire like internet infrastructure wiped out by that hurricane um and at least that's what parent company uh, alphabet of google is is saying currently but it's kind of i always thought this was a neat project um and this is actually an actual test bed for it to work so i think it's kind of cool it's awesome but it's still horrible that they're still trying to recover i it's been how long well, has it been weeks weeks it's been weeks it's, it's been, been weeks yeah i don't, I don't think weeks. that it's going to be like overnight uh, issue uh, like, but oh, we fixed it everybody's go- okay we're good to go but no like uh companies like um tesla are putting in solar panels everywhere so people have access to electricity again mm-hmm. um google is providing internet access to project loon um and i think those are probably the biggest um examples of things actually getting done unfortunately yes. like a lot of the aid that's going to that country is not getting more to where it needs to uh, and yes. these particular companies are essentially letting these neighborhoods these communities be self-sufficient very quickly uh and i think that's a you know that is a plus worst part even if, even with the visit of mr president tossing out paper towels here and there <laughs> that wasn't enough to help out that country man they no, are sending up yeah. quite a bit of a workforce out there lots of truck drivers out there because they need to be able to transport the materials here yep. and there but it's, it's just they need all the basic essentials yep. water it's electricity, very hard medical yeah it's very hard with an, in an island country and especially when uh the ships and the supplies can only come from the u.s like they have to come from us directly because of um various laws and codes and whatever uh, so, so yeah dumb. but still this is a this is at least a good story that no. says that a company is allowed to do something and they're they're doing um good things so there's an go. example that it could be obviously applied worldwide yeah for, for google it's a nice test project to say oh yeah look this is an example of it working so that's their benefit to it um but for Puerto Rico, it's like oh this is actually very necessary necessary for their survival and for their continued economic um growth it's like can, can anything be rural anymore like almost the whole planet has necessarily been discovered well there are there are several tribes i guess in the in the world that are still considered um untouched but other than that like no like you hope this does kind of prove like you can potentially have internet access and that, that that's kind of the idea of project loon is that it does provide internet access to places that are too rural for the infrastructure that necessary for normal and they're like laying ground wires and connecting into large cityscapes exactly. uh, even like the the electricity grid like when you have examples of like solar power homes you just need a solar cell in your house and a way to connect it to like uh, a converter and then you got an electricity home you don't need the electricity grid anymore you don't need don't the need internet that. yeah yeah so these are the kind of examples like where these projects work very well um and i i kind of like them i i'd almost want to like to go off the grid personally hey i i'd, yeah. I'd do it yeah hmm. okay uh next story uh this one is gonna be nice for harry potter fans yeah Dynatic Labs has a tremendous success with Pokemon Go, which paired their expertise in building location-based augmented reality mobile experiences with a tough flight IP with a ravenous fan base. So it stands as to the reason to that we will, <laughs> we should have expect a similar fan response to Harry Potter. Wizards Unite, an AR title set to launch in 2018, co-developed by Warner Brothers Interactive, it's its new sub-brand 
Port Key Games. Yeah, this is <laughs> like the, if you like Pokemon Go, uh, you're going to get a Harry Potter version of that, basically. And that's all this really says, is saying. Uh, but Pokemon Go has been and continues to be um, one of the most top uh, downloaded games in, in the entire world. Uh, even as expansion packs come out, it keeps having like millions and millions of players play every single day. Uh, so there's something to sneeze at. Uh, and so if they can do that to the Harry Potter universe, it might be a, a, a new fun way to, you know, enjoy that particular franchise. This is, I remember you played Pokemon Go for a little while. Would you yes. play a Harry Potter a- AR version of that? I'd try it. Like, if anything, you know, I was thinking it, it's, it's going to be, oh, a fantastic beast hunter kind of. Maybe, kind of or game. like wizard duels, or you're just like, oh, go find these things. Because Atlantic has also done a... Um, like a capture the map game, like a catch, capture yeah. the flag game, and uh, for for a different like mm-hmm. uh, property they have. Um, so you never know. But if, if they actually got the licensing for Harry Potter, like oh, that's that's some pretty good printed money there. Yeah, because remember the biggest thing, especially with Pokemon Go, is just uh, having player versus player. That's I don't know. Did they ever get around to actually doing that? No, not yeah. yet. It's 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 on their expansion pack list. No. Yeah, it's the thing that's going to come up at some point. Uh, they've they've gotten more cooperative play um, with some of the things they do for like taking out gems, but mm-hmm. nothing player versus player quite yet. See, for a Harry Potter game, yes, I would like the whole concept of collecting, you know, like a uh, random herbs, items, whatever to, to to be able to produce and make a spell. Say, you know, find your Patronus kind of deal. Or, I would uh, love to see a single player campaign. Like, you go on this campaign, but you could also compete or cooperate with other players mm-hmm. or other students uh, in, like, Hogwarts or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that would be an interesting because most of these games are just, they're very multiplayer. Yeah. Versus, and to me, like, I, I miss single-player campaigns. Um, that's more of the games I enjoy. I'd totally be all for the Wizard Duel. I think Wizard Duel would be cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, next story. This one's are kind of sad, folks. Scandals uh, and scandals and scandals. Scandalous. Okay, we're going to begin with, um, the, again, there are a lot of Hollywood scandals recently. We're talking about two in particular. First on the chopping block. Yep, is going to be Louis C.K. Uh, Louis C.K. this week has been accused by five different women um, who say that he cornered them and masturbated in front of them. Now, his Whoa. version of the story is that uh, Louis C.K. actually said that these stories were true. And this is kind of the twist that he's not denying it. He's open. He's, he, like, he's, I he's like, I did it. Uh, he's saying, I... At the time, I had consent from them, um, and somebody gave it a thumbs up. I think they're talking about something else, but yeah. uh, oh, trust me, they'll catch up. Yeah, they'll catch up at some <laughs> point. Yeah, um, but he's saying he had consent from them, but that doesn't make it necessarily right because he had a position of authority over some fans, and so even if they said yes, they might have really been saying no, and he deeply regrets it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that does not that did not stop people from um, dropping him left and right. Uh, like he's lost a lot of work. He'd been dropped by HBO, Universal Studios, FX, Netflix, his manager, his publicist. He's lost work. Um, he can't find a distributor anymore for his latest movie. And he's lost his part in the life of pets too. And there's just a huge ton of follow up, but I think at least he admits that there, that it happened. He's not denying it in any way, shape or form. He's not suing the people who are accusing him like some other people are. Or paying him hush money or yeah, anything, or anything like, that. like that. Or just saying, oh, I'm going to rehab, but not, not actually doing anything about it. He's like, no, no, this is effed up, and um, I feel bad. And, you know, so he at least, I, to me, that, that's different at least to say he's culpable for it. He's not denying it at all. Wow, because there's so many others. Like, I know we're going to talk about a few celebrities and whatnot, but there's so many others that... You know, there's your hidden secret, quote unquote, love life, your your fetish thing that you do behind the scenes and stuff like that, that you hopefully it's all consensual with the person. Because I remember there was a period, and I think it's still around, mm. where they had people sign like a uh, non disclosure yeah, oh, non-disclosure non-disclosure agreements. Yeah. Exactly. Like, all right, whatever goes down between you and me, I need you to sign this. And yeah. Make sure it's all just between us. I don't, anybody needs to know what kind of freaky things I'm into. Yeah, that's fine. But these are, I think these acts are all like unwanted. Um, for the most part, I, I can't oh, yeah. say for everything, for every celebrity, whatever. Uh, but all these things in particular are all keyed key around men in power mm-hmm. using that power to essentially force themselves on men or women um, who have, you know, so there's a different power, power dynamic. Um, yeah. And it, it, it's non consensual. And I think that's the big key like the difference between, oh, being in a relationship with somebody and just being kind of freaky and like doing these things or like making advances that are unwanted or, you know, 
some, yeah. in some cases, almost forcing yourself on other people. Oh, yeah, like we talked about uh, before uh, the last thing when when it was the wine scene. But let me ask you a question. Like for Louis C.K. in particular, it is this was kind of a joke open secret for him. Like a lot of people in Hollywood were like, oh, yeah, they kind of had heard. I mean, even myself, like I don't we live very relatively far from Hollywood. We live in California. But even I had heard like the rumors of like Louis C.K. doing some freaky things you heard the like in public. Chuck Berry? Um, oh, you mean Chuck Berry as in the, the piano player? That's not a rumor of like what? The rock and roll guy. Okay. You, um, you heard of his uh, esca- escapades? Which one was that? Was that the one where he had like uh, cameras in the toilets that he owned or something? Yeah, and he liked the, the girls. Uh, uh, the, he liked to have the girls uh, be in his butt while he farted and have them inhale his butt. Oh yeah, no, no, those aren't rumors. Those are actually That's true. Like, true. And there are recordings. <laughs> yes. There are recordings, and there are lawsuits that say those things actually happened. Yeah. Uh, and just, we, we just got our NC seventeen rating. Yeah, um, but yeah. yeah, it's it's there's. I mean, it, like I said, there's just there's the sex tape stuff. Yeah. There's uh, you know, you know, you could be into your S and M. No, yeah, and, that, and like so, those those things are again different than I think this is. This oh, no, whole slew part. of yes. Yes. of accusations from just like oh, yeah. every bit of coming out of the woodwork saying, oh yeah, this is stuff that happens all the time, and yeah. we're making specific application against this person and this person and this yeah, person yeah. Um, and people feeling comfortable for once or safe enough I guess to, to actually do it in, instead of it just being a secret in Hollywood and another example is, is the next one which is yeah. just Kevin Spacey oh, and we're kind of picking out two particular people just just because like the fallout for them in particular as actors that you may or may not have liked has been humongous and in this case Kevin Spacey has been accused by just 15 uh, to start out as one one guy just saying he did this, uh, but 15 men have come forward in total, some who were teens when this actually occurred, mm-hmm. uh, accusing him of sexual misconduct, including groping, grabbing, and attempted sexual assault. Um, his original response to the first accusation um, was one of a forgetful apology. He, he basically says, I don't remember this happening. If it did, I'm very sorry about it. Um, you know, it, it troubles me greatly. If this would occur while I was drunk at some point in my, you know, 30s or 20s, I've whatever. Done so much of it because I've that happened track. in his that happened in his 20s to, and he did it to a 14 year old. The guy oh, from um, who was is on Star Trek Discovery as like the scientist guy no. made the accusation. Like when wow. I was 14, I was at a party with Kevin Spacey and a bunch of other people, and in the bedroom he kind of forced himself on me, laid down on me and like, and nothing else happened, yeah, but it's like, still like the, yeah. the act itself is like, like to a 14 year old boy. Yeah. And like, and yeah. Kevin's part of Kevin Spacey's response was that, Oh, I'm also letting people know that I'm identifying as gay. I've been much for men and women, but I'm, I'm saying that I'm gay. And that was part of his apology. Oh, I'm coming out now. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going the Ellen approach, and suddenly everybody's going to be accepting me for who I am. No, dude, well, yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't call the Ellen approach. I don't think she came out as an apology. Uh, yeah, that's true, but I'm uh, but, it, but it, a lot of people took it as like, oh, he's trying to side. He like change your view. Like, oh, he, he he's apologizing. But oh, look, he's also gay, so it's a coming out moment. Mm. So you should be proud of him. No. Um, and and <laughs> no. people didn't really fall for it. No. And instead, more and more men have come out saying, gay, straight. Oh yeah, these Europe these things have also happened, and he's done worse. Um, so. So Kevin Spacey has also felt the weight of, of these actions and people dropping him. Um, he's been fired from House of Cards officially. He's also, the entire show has been canceled, um, all on Netflix. He's been cut out of a Curb One Out documentary he had a pardon. Um, he's been dropped by his agent, his publicist. Um, and this, this is to me, like most... Um, like this is somebody saying, oh, we really don't want you in our, our associate with you. There's a Ridley Scott film that's been finished. It's it's slated to come out on December the 22nd and they're reshooting any scene that Kevin Spacey. And these wow. are not minor scenes. They hired a different actor so that they could reshoot all those scenes and cut Kevin Spacey out of an already finished movie that's slated to come out next month. Uh, wow. And so like that is that is somebody saying, that's oh, we hardcore. do definitely do not want it. So that's a huge expense at this point. Seriously. Yeah. I'm like, uh, like in the wrestling world, there's a wrestler named by Chris Benoit where he killed his uh, his wife and his son and they try to like erase him out of the book same thing yeah. with like even hulk hogan they're iconic people that you you cannot pretend that you don't know unless you're a a new age m- m- millennial that never heard of them in the beginning it's not gonna matter to you right. but other people that grew up listening to like lucy k watching his show hearing his stand-up kevin spacey movies uh how can you like pretend you know they didn't exist yeah yeah and for me i guess for one thing it's when it's their accusations for men in power in Hollywood, like producers, directors, oh, yeah. finance people, that to me is like one thing. Okay, these guys are ugly. 
you know, they're they're Casting all they're, cash, they're, gross they're, guys. they're just power people who are using the power to it's the only way to get some. To yeah, basically, and and but when they're like actual famous, talented people, I'm like that makes less sense. I mean, the power dynamic itself, uh, people with power yeah. abuse that power. If you that, want that, that job, I, you I get do that. This job. Yeah, but like these people are just like they're they are already good looking. They're already powerful people. They're already like talented. So why would they need to do these things? Um, and I, that, that, that confuses me more than just like the old, old wrinkly dudes who are like, Oh, this is the only way I can, uh, you know, yeah, get the intention. And it's not just a Hollywood underbelly kind of sex thing. It happens everywhere. No matter what line of business, you could be working at a, at a fast food restaurant and you know, you got this old creepy manager guy creeping up on you. He's like, Hey, if you want to move up or you want extra hours, or yeah, yeah, I know you that you're, with you're absolutely correct. That this happens all the time in part dynamics and all of the world um doesn't make it right or anything um danny martinez the time says leather socks whip whip um leather socks whips pecan pie and milkshakes <laughs> safety words see through i think he's telling the things he likes which okay. is fine thank <laughs> you fine. thank you danny martinez this is this is a safe zone we are not going to judge you okay. uh but thank you for letting us know your safe word we will use it sparingly um also uh Castapello Crowley says, uh, Eddie, I think this is the first time I seen the show live. So hey, yeah, so welcome, welcome, hey. Eddie. Yeah. Um, but back to the story real quick. It's it's so out there. It's like once again, uh, for for the power thing is one thing, but you know, if you have your own little secret life that you don't really want to talk about, you know, your own like, Fifty Shades of Grey funkiness that you like to do, right. you know, being amongst consensual adults and stuff like that, but. The whole power trip. The yeah, that, that's different trip. than people abusing their power. And I yeah. think that's the thing people are outraged, outraged about. And that's why people are coming for Because it's, it's one thing for it to be like a, a an open secret. Like these things happen in Hollywood. It's another thing to see person after person after person come in and saying, oh, no, this, this director, this producer said I have to do this thing or... I'm not going to get cast or they use their position authority to try to force me to do a thing. Um, and I'm like that having actual examples is, is something that has been um, shocking and startling to people in general. Throw it out real quick right now. There, there's there's a, almost like a, like a pool happening. Who do you think is going to be next? Um, oh, it's so, it's so weird to like even make this, like I would say a different comedian. Cause I those, comedian? I would say another comedian. I think it's like, to say somebody in particular, I don't know, but okay. I'll say a comedian. Because the only thing they, they kind of talked about a little bit tapped is, uh, and he was pretty open about it, uh, uh, so, um, Mr. Batman, Bat- Ben Affleck himself. Oh, I thought you were going to say yeah. someone else. Because like, his okay. younger days, and it was kind of a joke in, in the one in the Jane and Silent Bob movie, where he's all like, it's a cold 45 or something like that. He's like, ha ha, I wasn't with, even, with a hooker today, you know, because oh. they always, you know, assumed that he was a well, that's, whore. Well, and- that is different than, like, the word time, like, people's, like, dirty laundry, like, the things yeah. they do secretly in, in, yeah. in their bedroom is different than, oh, accusations of a sexual assault. Of so I, I don't think that's going to quite falls on this same line of category uh well, but like, see hefner's dead so you can't really no no i mean it's, yeah someone one of the things like oh there are so many dudes in power that it's like oh who hasn't at some point like been tempted to use that to like oh to do something like and that, that's one of the things like when you have authority over somebody you have to be extra careful about right. like using that authority in any form to you know with people of the opposite sex because it's very easy for that power dynamic to be the influencer I'm going to go with the colonel when he was alive. The colonel, as in like the KFC guy? Yes. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> That's the, I'm saying comedian, he's saying fast food franchise ad. Yes. So there you go. Those are our bets, folks. Okay, uh, now to on to some more, slightly more um, happier news, I guess. Potentially oh, happy. Man. Yeah, this Potential is, happy news. This is I'm, definitely I'm, a very interesting story. I got so excited. So let's, get, let's talk about this. Executives at 21st Century Fox, the parent company behind Fox's film, TV, and broadcast divisions, have reportedly discussed selling most of the company to Disney. Fox Film Studio, 20th Century's Fox, and presumably all its properties and subsidiaries, uh, like Fox Searchlight, will be owned by Disney. That would assumably mean Fox owned Marvel properties like X Men and Fantastic Four would return. Yes, hopefully, hopefully, crossing fingers to Disney and Marvel. Additionally, Disney would require the rights to James Cameron's Avatar franchise, for for which there is already a Presa, what was it? Presence. Pre- present uh, as an avatar. Oh, yeah. 
As an Avatar Land already exists at Disney World, Disney would reportedly own Fox's TV studio, 20th Century Fox TV, and its uh, productions like Family Guy, 24, and more. Ooh, that's interesting. Hmm. Additional Fox uh, news uh, networks like uh, uh, FX and National Geographic would reportedly become owned by Disney. Yeah, I mean, Disney's used to having like some edgy properties. I mean, mm-hmm. Miramax was owned by Disney, um, and they made Jane Silent Bob, but they made all those, you know, Kevin Smith movies. Uh, mm-hmm. Under a different title, obviously, but they're not, they're used to like having some race yourself. Um, but I think the thing that got a bunch of nerds excited is the fact that Disney would own the X-Men. other Marvel licenses, like like the X Men. Um, it's one of the two main ones that everybody wants to check out, yeah, and the Fantastic Four. So, I'm like, those two like you know, intellectual properties could then be brought into the actual Marvel universe, which is something we'd, we've always nerds galore have oh, been God. hoping for like some kind of deal back or, home <laughs> or licensing thing happening and mm-hmm. this probably got a bunch of nerd boners when it when it came out so we all cross our fingers hope that something that's actually happens um so would you be is this exciting news for you man oh definitely because it was like the whole deal that we were hoping that the way hopefully they work out a deal the way they did with spider-man yeah because obviously sony didn't just let go of spider-man They're like you know we'll let, we'll let you play with spider-man he's still ours but we'll let you play with them. Yeah. So they worked out a deal, obviously. I like the deal for the Hulk. Um, the Hulk basically gets to be in every any Avengers or any Marvel film. Um, and and that's it. I mean, he can see Marvel's never going to make a, an independent Hulk film. He's always just going to be a side character. But they can kind of put him in whatever they want to. I like that deal a lot. I would yeah. love to see that with the X-Men or anybody else. Even if like this deal doesn't come to... But ideally, Marvel would buy out Fox, 20th Century Fox, and then they can do whatever they want with these intellectual properties. And I think that's that's the thing we're all super excited about. Seeing the X-Men finally with Spider-Man or the Avengers, especially for, if you would do like that larger franchise movie of um, Infinity Wars. Oh, yeah. Uh, then yeah. seeing the X-Men in there would be amazing. Or in the future, maybe something like with, oh, um, Galactus yeah. comes by, and then you got X-Men, Spider-Man, and the Avengers all all in the same movie, oh, they got the so same way they were in the comics. So there are just much. so many nerd dreams here. Oh, yeah. Uh, the crossovers. The only part that I kind oh. of find it funny now that I think about it yep. is the whole um, uh, Family Guy. Because right. Family Guy is... Family Guy and the Simpsons... I put a couple jabs at Disney. Yeah, making yeah. fun of them. You know the. Then they uh, started become Disney properties. Oh, exactly. Now, I'm like, oh god, we're your bitch now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Danny Martinez in the chat room says he hopes Wonder Woman two gets filmed. Um, this is was a breaking story that came out uh, today in that the um, the actress who plays Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot, has refused to sign on for Wonder Woman two, wow. as long as um, one of the producers. Um, who's been accused of sexual misconduct and sexual assault uh-huh. uh, is involved at all. Like he has oh, a, he's done. He's he basically done. has a, he has a production company that helped finance Wonder Woman. He, that, mm-hmm. that was the extent of his involvement but because he made money off of it. Gal Gadot is saying now that she will not sign on for Wonder Woman 2 at all if he's involved in any way, shape or form. Um, and so uh, kudos to her on that. Kudos that, to her on Cause that's the, yeah, you're basically saying, um, I, I'm, I like, Having a clean conscience, I guess, yeah, uh, more yeah. than having money, uh, yeah. and so we all hope that Wonder Woman two. I don't doubt that Wonder Woman two is going to come out. I oh, mean, it's going to be made. Yeah, yeah. When, whenever it is like a first film, you need we have a lot of people who aren't sure of their bets, and so you get financing from a bunch of different people. Uh, but yeah. at this point, Wonder Woman has proved to be a, a, an amazing intellectual property, so I don't doubt that they'll cut out those financing, unless like there's some contract thing, and they're saying, yeah. "Oh, uh, he has to be involved in any future no. productions as like a side bin." Uh, but even at that point, it's like, "Here's some money, um, go away." Hush so we, money yeah. royalty, something like that. That's more than likely what's going to happen. Oh yeah, yeah. Because screw that guy, screw anybody that does that kind of dirtbag stuff. But yeah, it's gonna get made. It's gonna get made. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. So, but, but good move on her part as far as like making sure um, he's not involved. If if those accusations are because again they have not been proven true, they are just accusations at this yeah. point as far as like a court of law is concerned. That guy's gonna be smart. Hopefully, he does, does the right thing. I'm like, why not? Just like take your losses and you yeah. Know. Now I can't can't wait to today. I can see all that Marvel awesomeness uh on the at, at the theme parks because they they still yeah, that'd be cool too they're still to this day right now in universal studios they still have some uh marvel property at, well you've at seen Florida. marvel you've seen a few marvel properties um in in disney before like you've seen captain america you've seen thor come in like like special events at mm-hmm. disneyland yeah. occasionally um or like you know, promote the films yeah. but it's not like a, a regular they don't have their own ride necessarily it's 
they, they, Marvel has their own island um, in, Florida, in Florida, so they kind of do their own thing that way. But little spoilers, uh, part of the developing that uh, I fill you guys in on, uh, Disney uh, is actually remodeling a couple of sections in there. They're actually going to focus on uh, more of a Pixar influence and, of course, Marvel. Yep. That's a real quick uh, insider story. Uh, section where right now is uh, Monsters, Inc. They're going to convert that whole area into a Marvel-related because it's right next to Guardians right. of the Galaxy. And the uh, what's called Paradise Pier will be now known as Pixar Pier there instead of the roller coaster uh, it's going to be called the Incredicoaster really the Incredibles is coming out yeah exactly. and uh, it's rumored that we're going to see our first Incredibles 2 trailer doing um, doing the Coco movie I think it's actually coming out today so. like at least a teaser Oh, well, the that's teaser. the rumor that you're going to see a full trailer uh, during that particular production. Okay, yeah. uh, next story is also so fun, also Disney-related. We have um, some of some sad and some happy news, maybe, I guess. Um, mixed emotions. Mixed emotions. Basically, um, we already knew that Disney and Netflix's contractual uh, deal is coming to an end. Uh, Disney has this week announced, basically, that they're pulling all of their original Netflix um, products for the future and currently off of Netflix and they're going to put on their own streaming channel. Uh, so you're not going to see Daredevil. You're not going to see Jessica Jones. You're not going to see um, Luke Cage. No one cares about Iron Fist, but you're not going to see any of those products on Disney, uh, sorry, on Netflix anymore. Um, and that is sort of sad because you, that that's something that you, for me anyways, have kind of associated with Netflix. Like that, yeah, that's the reason to go. That's those deals. Like it also explains why Netflix has been making so many other properties um, outside of those, you know, hits potentially because they, they want to recapture that audience. Um, but is this exciting for you? Is this sad? Or is this a reason for you to buy that new Disney streaming service? I'm hoping they can work something out on that part. Have like the way have, uh, how Disney has Miramax and uh, whatnot. Have Netflix for their for their racy, quasi raunchy, you know, their their uh, Marvel stuff, and keep the PG family friendly oriented PG thirteen stuff on the on the Disney one. Because mm -hmm. uh, once again, they don't cross the universes really much. On even though it, they, there's there's talk about characters, they're not gonna you're not gonna see Iron Man hang out with uh, Daredevil anytime soon. Not that's just more along the like want to keep their universes separate at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, but none of the thing says that they can. There are rumors that uh, Jessica Jones, um, Daredevil are going to show up for Infinity Wars. Oh, um, include and also the uh, some of the people from uh, Agents of Shield. Okay. Uh, per, Coulson is supposed to show up again for for the Infinity Wars. So that might not be true forever. Okay. Um, I mean, there's already such a huge full cast. Why not throw some other people from <laughs> like the, the Netflix versions of them? Um, a better, another thing that Disney could do hypothetically is just buy Netflix. And then, like, they, <laughs> look, you, then you, you got to own the world. Then you got a streaming service that's already super popular and profitable. Um, well, go. well sort of profitable. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and then all those original productions are already theirs, and you don't have to make your own network necessarily. You know what I mean? That, That's true. Instead of banking it from scratch, let's just get buy somebody else. Like maybe if the Fox still doesn't go through, they can go with this uh, Netflix deal or something. At least it's an option. Okay. Uh, speaking of more, you know, um, stuff. <laughs> your turn. <laughs> let's talk about more more X Men and superheroes. Yeah. Last summer, Gerard Way's elect. Eccentric, eclectic, eclectic, yeah. eclectic superhero comic. The Umbrella Academy was picked up by, uh, up as a TV series by Netflix. Now, the first actress to enroll in the Academy is a graduate of Xavier School of the for Gifted Youngsters. Deadline is reporting that Ellen Page has landed one of the leading roles in the Umbrella Academy. Page previously played Kitty Pride in two of the X Men movies, but her part in the series will be much bigger. Yes. Uh, so this is the story. Um, we're going to see Ellen Page as a character in the Umbrella Academy, which is actually a very popular and interesting um, take on like superpowers uh, as a comic series. So it, it's interesting. Um, she's also been someone who complained about the director for the X Men um, movie that she was in. Singer. Yeah, she was saying that. Oh, he 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 outed her when she was like 18 years old. Um, to really? the cast, and he was, um, I guess, abusive and language to her. He didn't do anything to her, but oh. she complains that he was, he kind of outed her. What a dick. Which is, which she had not come out at that point. Either way, if she is or she's not, I always love well, I mean, she, she totally is, but she, at yeah. that point, she had nobody else had publicly yeah. known, apparently. Oh, well, she grew on me as, as a person, of course, loved her in Juno. Uh, uh, I was wondering how big her role actually was going to be in the X Men series, and other than the, alternative storyline if you will because 
being Kitty Pride in the Days of Future Past. Yeah. She was the one that's supposed to go in the past. Not supposed to, but Logan's more popular, so I, I understand why they went in that direction. Money. Yes, he's he brings in more people from the box office. Exactly. Okay, uh, next story um, related to Star Wars and Disney again. Look like this is like the Disney show, apparently. Um, Ryan Johnson um, is ending his his time as the director of The Last Jedi, but apparently he's done such a great job that they're giving him three new, a new whole new trilogy for him to direct um, in the Star Wars universe. So it's going to come after J.J. Abrams finishes on 2019, uh, Rathers episode number nine, but he's going to get a whole new trilogy. So I'm like, oh, Ryan Johnson has apparently done a decent job on this, at least. Now, trilogy as in connection to the star, uh, standalone films? I think or so. we're going to go 10, 11, 12? They haven't said yet. The, 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 they've only just announced that he, he's going to get a, his own trilogy. Um, it could be set in the future. It could be set in like the very far past. Like It could be Knights of the Old Republic kind of struggling, which I would be I, I would be happy to see a Knights of the Old Republic like prequel series of like, oh, literally just saying Knights of the Old Republic 1, 2, and 3, and you tell like an old Jedi story where it's like, People using Sith and Jedi powers left and right, you know, oh, lightsabers yeah. everywhere. I would be cool with that. Well, yeah, it's all all about uh, all the other uh, storylines uh, from the books, from the video games, from all that that they could definitely work and make a movie off of, or even you know, a continuation of what they had on the animated series. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's glad to see Star Wars fans. It doesn't end. It will not end. Because Disney's gonna milk the hell out of that thing. Yeah, Disney's definitely gonna milk the hell out of it. So it's interesting to see what the how. They're giving a whole like trilogies now to people who do it. Hopefully, at least a decent job. So, so what do you think? A new Darth of some kind? Well, definitely. I mean, that's that's kind of the core of it. Like, uh, there's always some villain. There's always some hero. They both use force powers. Uh, I I think there are just more opportunities. Like the older you, like farther back in the Jedi history we go, you have hundreds and thousands of Jedi's in this massive war. Mm-hmm. Um, like the video game franchise have have really taken advantage of it. Um, oh, yeah. Why not the movies? Like instead of like that was one of the cool things about. Um, the prequel series like oh you had hundreds of Jedi fighting all at the same time Mm -hmm. you have massive amounts of stories like individual Jedi stories like this Jedi having this force power in this particular story arc why not I mean there are tons of those stories in those universes whether they're from comics or independent novels why not use them to make good films exactly so there you go all right. Okay, more nerdy stuff, which is the whole show, basically. Yeah, you hobbit mother... No, okay. Uh, this past weekend, we learned that Warner Brothers and the estate of J.R.R. Tolkien are looking to produce a Lord of the Rings TV series with Amazon. So they decided Amazon won it? Uh, yep, Amazon. Because I heard there was a bidding war between Amazon and Netflix. It looked like Amazon... Going for it, yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, they got to make up for all that uh Yeah, all this kind of producers, stuff that's yeah. going bye-bye. We we benefit when people have bidding wars. Yeah, there you go. So I guess there was going to be an actual television series for Lord of the Rings. Um, a lot of the actors were like, yeah, this makes sense. Like, it's been a number of years. It's been like, what, 15, 10, 12, 15 years since uh, the movies came out. It's been a while. When was um, that Smog one, the Hobbit one? I don't know that I would count that because that's not part of this particular deal this is mm-hmm. specifically lord of the rings mm-hmm. um but those are such huge novels like yeah you can you can spin that off and do its own television shows the same way you can for the the um dark tower series oh, yeah. there are like multiple books in those series so why not make them a television series which needs like these large arcs uh to to, to fill in like whole seasons worth of stuff like 26 episodes for a season um you know you have a bunch of material why not use it all it's so this is it. fun yeah, it was the same way that we were talking about right I now did, about Star Wars. Yeah, I, I just hope they don't do like the um, sort of Shannara like twist on like those novels and like team them up, um, like merging the character, not merging. Well, the no, like together, making like really young. Like the sort of Shannara series is an MTV product now. Like it's originally, oh, yes, 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 it yes. was a it's a not it's a fantasy novel series, um, and they took it for MTV and they made it like really teeny boppery, uh, and I'm mm. like that's. That's a way to go. Some people We're are going to like it. We're still young. Uh, but yeah, that I just hope they don't do with like the hobbits. Like you have a bunch of teenage hobbits suddenly. I'm like, I'm like, mm. I had no issue at all when they when they were doing like semi fantasy uh, storylines for what remember uh, uh, Xena and Hercules. Yeah, it was a thing and it was good. It, it went on for a couple seasons. It you know it had its run and all that, and everybody still loved it. Uh, I don't see no no reason why they couldn't do with uh, Lord of the Rings as for, I don't know, what would you say, half hour, hour episodes? You, I would like to see rather um, than like a bunch of like weird episodes, like just make them 
not just about walking. Like Game of Thrones, basically do a Game of Thrones version of Lord of the Rings. Not like the not like, like the gore and topless, and nothing. I wouldn't mind doing some Hobbit boob, Hobbit boobs, <laughs> but um, like make them like just like a short run, twelve episodes, no like solid, a uh, solid <laughs> story arcs without a lot of fluff. Um, I think that would work. And yes, I, I know that intention. No, 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 this is a fluff, hobbits, hair, short yeah. pun. I got it all. Um, yeah, I want to check it out. I'm, I'm just, it's going to be a lot of CG. So all those are people working in, Not in necessarily. that industry. Remember, a lot of Lord of the Rings takes place in a forest. Like the only CG stuff that you really need uh, would maybe be Golem, the dragon, one of the other dragons, Lord of the Rings. Um, like when you get towards Mount Doom, yeah. some CD, a lot of it can be just practical effects. If anything, I actually like the orcs a lot more than I did. The, yeah. The all that's practical and effects and all that stuff. Yeah. All that, all that absolutely practical effects. You don't, you don't need a ton of CGI. Not that you can't do it these days. No, yeah. You look at Netflix stuff, CGI stuff is relatively inexpensive. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people can afford it to do mm-hmm. now. Okay. More nerdy stuff, folks. We have our first look at the new, like some, one of the, well, one of the new shots of the new doctor for doctor who it's a girl. Uh, and a lot of people are excited about it. Some people are greatly offended, apparently, by uh, offended. her having as many boobs as she does hearts. Um, uh, the Time Lords have two hearts. Oh, yeah. I was like, what? It's a nerd <laughs> joke, man. I, I get it. You're not. You're not. Like, uh, you're just, if I was, I was like, ha, I get it. And I yeah. was like, what? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we have a, one of our first looks. Looks very pretty. This is going to be her new outfit as like the first female doctor. Um, and it's kind of a compilation of a lot of different nods All to right. other characters and click the trench coat the Strange. particular stripe is um that was the same pattern as like one of the doctors had for his his scarf um these pants in particular i think they come from another character you know so a lot of different little like pieces like oh i'm still one of the doctors like these little nods so this is the part of uh, our cover of vogue magazine judging, judging her outfit as she walks down the runway oh it doesn't work darling it doesn't no 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 no, burn it. No, burn it. You are mistaken. <laughs> this works totally. Right. No. Look at the way those colors match together. You have yellow with yellow matching the shoes and the boots. Fabulous, darling. Fabulous. No. Yep, there you go. She looks like a fisherman. She's like just missing. Well, she obviously has the coat. All she's missing is that damn hat and going getting fish sticks out in the sea. It is a very, it's a little fashionable to be honest. Um, but like each doctor has had their own look that they've kind of morphed into their own thing. Um, maybe this might change in the future. I would be curious to see if like her outfits change throughout the season. She will. I don't know. Because I mean, the other doctor keep her in a suit like everyone else. No, the other doctors all have their own look, like their own identifiable yes. thing. And so, whether they keep that, I, I think that'll be kind of curious. It is an opportunity for more things to sell, though. Oh yeah, Doctor Who was. You know what they're gonna do? They're gonna put her in a dress. They it's might at happen. some point. I mean, I you see regular doctors and dresses are up and fancy dress at some point. So bloomers let, and everything. I am curious to see how they're gonna change the the character and the arcs for a female main character, though. I, I am curious. So yeah, there that's you go. true. Okay, uh, more movie stuff. We have the rap and there you go, Black, yeah. uh, Black Adam. According to the rap, Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam will make a, his big screen debut in Suicide Squad Two. Uh, that's not the movie that I would like have to expect him to show up in, but the news comes from two inside sources. Yeah, so, so there you go. I'm, I'm surprised, but I'm not. I'm, I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised. We know that they're making the um, Shazam movie currently. Yes. they've cast the main characters, um, both as little kid Shazam and Billy Batson and an adult Shazam. Um, you know, superhero version. Um, but that entire franchise is basically to set up Dwayne the Rock Johnson as the Black Adam. Like that's that's the vehicle. But, but that has to be filmed first. So I'm not surprised that the, they're making a space for, for the rock to show up as that character. Um, I'm just surprised that it's going to be in Suicide Squad. They got to cash in but that, somehow. That franchise is also big mash of like, oh, bunch of other characters that we have licenses for. Let's put them together. Exactly. Uh, I don't know that he's like an actual main character or just like do an appearance like towards the end or middle. The same way they did for um, like some other characters. Like remember they had one character they had to kill in every Suicide Squad movie and you know, and no. so his only purpose there was as like, oh, this to is die. the dude that dies. This shows like, oh yeah, those bombs are real. Yeah. Um, so the black and might just show up at some point either as like a minor villain or just like as a cameo. We don't know. I'm gonna think it's gonna be one of those post credit things where like, it, yeah, it could also be a post credit thing. Yeah, here uh, like a, like a meteor hit the planet and him just starting just standing up. up and looking yeah. At- that could totally be it. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Uh, in more movie news, we have Red Sonia is Ooh. coming back to, to film. Um, we've seen her in the comics. We've seen her a, a 
few time in different movies. My favorite is definitely going to be the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger, where he's not Conan because they don't have the rights to that character. That's but he's a, basically everything Conan. else Conan. Yeah, he's basically Conan, um, and he shows up in Red Sonia. Um, so a new production company called Million Media will finance uh, a new vision of Red Sonia, and I'm happy to see because we don't have enough of those like good barbarian movies. Like they tried to bring them back with um, like The Rock in in that particular franchise, like that yeah. spinoff of The Mummy. Mm-hmm. I don't know that it did particularly well, and it, it tried but it to was a good try. A, yeah. a reboot of of Conan itself with uh, Mr. Aquaman. Yeah, I, now you know him as Jason Momoa as yeah. Aquaman as the guy from from um from that television show but then he was just the dude who's not who's not who's not Arnold Schwarzenegger oh yeah 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 but it, it was good did you watch it I did, I did see reason? it I, I remember watching it and thinking he's not Arnold Schwarzenegger oh well obviously yeah that was my thoughts for that movie it's a different take it was interesting I, I liked it and all um I, I I'll check it out I just wonder who do you think as for Red Sonia herself um I don't know how many hot redheads are there Right now, currently. Well, if because uh, that is definitely part of the character. I'm not just I'm not just asking for general purposes. If uh, obviously this uh, Wonder Woman thing doesn't work out, Gal Gadot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if the audience has any suggestions for their for their perfect casting for Red Sonia, Red please Sonya. feel free to to drop Let's us a, a line. Ronda Rousey? Nah. That could. I mean, no, that actually could work. Um, you have a very athletic character. She, she can definitely do it. I mean, you, it's the same pool you're pulling from for like the the, the bodybuilder pool. Yeah. Um. Because you definitely want someone who's physical who can also do all the stunts. Because that's a big jobs. core of of that story. And she and Ronda Rousey has done stuff before. Dire her red. Um, you don't, you know what you don't well, you kind of need the red hair. It's red Sonia. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would actually see that. I could see that. Yeah, actually, good good pull, man. Yeah. So we're going Ronda Rousey, folks. Yeah. Um, if you have another suggestion for, her, um, I, I was thinking one of the um, redheads like Christina Hardwick or whatever. Or you want a natural Chadwick. Something Chadwick. like yeah. um, any of those pretty girls could do it. I guess if if they yeah. got like beefed up and like, but like Ronda Rousey makes a lot of sense to me, and a lot of other like action wrestling women could also probably do it as well if they have the action chops. Yeah. I could see any of those women doing it, but I think the physicality is definitely a big part of it. We have a special guest, obviously, in our house. Yeah. Little Very children good. have arrived. Uh, we're almost at the end of the show, anyways, folks. Uh, so we have our movie trailer showdown, and then that's about it. So. Yeah. So yes, I saw I saw Sherlock Gnomes, Game Night, and Early Man. Yeah, so three three episode, three trailers. There were a lot of good trailers. Week. Sorry, guys. We have uh, Sherlock Holmes, Game Night, and we have uh, Early Man. Of course, we have a special guest. Um, Let's a, introduce her. Yeah, there she is. Her first appearance uh, on the live broadcast of the you. podcast. Let's see if this bumps up our numbers. Yeah, I, it very may well. That cuteness factor. Yeah. Aww. See. See everybody. So my, my hybrid, my brethren. My, this is this is this is the product of his loins. This is the, this is the family. <laughs> see. Hi. See, like you can see everybody here. Like, <gasps> who's that? There we go. See. Ooh. Yeah, you're famous now. Yeah, you're famous. Okay, so we have a couple. <laughs> oh look, uh, let's see. Actually, Matt, uh, Matthew Dennis McKellen says. Mm, the chat room. Actually, I think the TV series will be based on the entire Tolkien legendary. So, um, Matthew is saying, referring back to the um, Tolkien television series, mm-hmm. not just Lord of the Rings, but everything, which makes it even bigger because there's a lot more books than just Lotor. Um, he also says that finally we'll see Tom Babaldi on screen. Do you know who that is? I have no idea. Oh, no. I think he, there's a character in the Lord of the Rings franchise the name of the character? in the book who's, yeah, he's the, he's. He, He's considered a minor character, and he's only kind of referenced in like the actual movies. But he's he's, a, he's interesting. So yeah, okay. yeah. Why not bring up all the all the all Lord of the Rings characters that then didn't quite make the film production, or even the ones that they made up just for the movies? There, there are a couple go. of those as well. So there you go. Okay, so movie trailer showdown. Three trailers. Um, we have a star with Sherlock Gnomes. Um, this is the one that's basically the sequel to uh, Rome, um, Nomeo and Juliet. Which is kind of weird that they didn't go with that, like Nomi and Juliet too. Yeah. And so they're emphasizing Sherlock Gnomes as the main character. Um, I think it's very interesting, possibly storyline though. Hoping for a spinoff or something. I saw the original, uh, and it's cute. It's very um, uh, music oriented with a lot of Elton John music and, and stuff like before. I don't know. Have you saw Nomi and Juliet? I haven't seen it really. It was okay. I probably would have given it like a six out of ten. Which the funny thing is, but it wasn't. Actually, it wasn't amazing. It's actually a Disney property it is. at the time, so but you wouldn't know though to, to watch it though. Yeah. Um, but I think the addition of like this mystery 
is a better plot line than the original Nomi and Juliet story, which is just which is fine with me. Yeah, they also have bigger name characters in there. Uh, Johnny Depp as Sherlock Gnomes. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Um, in the chat room also asks, what's the deal with the Legend of Conan movie? I haven't heard of it. Well, they done a new video game for it. Yeah, so if that's it, true. If, it, uh, if there's a movie in the works, which is new to me, I don't know if there's uh, they've already got a lead for that or a story or anything going on. If it, oh, if it, that's right. They I remember like they they there was buzz about a new Legend of Conan movie, like who's going to play it. Um, I think that's stalled. I don't I don't I don't believe they've made it. Um, and or or even cast it. It's kind of just stalled out somewhere. Yeah, unless as far as I'm it. aware. Unless obviously Jason Momoa is still in shape and still able, so they could always yeah, bring him they out. could. You know, that would definitely be a, a much better produced movie now because I think that was some of the issues with that um, older kind of movie he was in. Budget, like they just so. didn't have the budget to do it as well as they would have liked, um, and that's just the way it goes sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one trailer, Sherlock Gnomes. We have another one called Game Night, which I thought was actually kind of neat. It was an interesting take. It reminded me a little bit of the movie of of Clue, and I can't. I think. I can't think of the name of the movie to save my life. Yeah. But it was a whole concept of uh, uh, a group of friends having dinner. Like, how about we kill somebody? I don't think that was Clue was, but yeah. No, no, no. But this oh, is a different, movie. different, different movie, movie in general. Different movie. Yeah, different yeah. movie in general. This is kind of the same concept mm-hmm. of like, oh, what's real? What isn't? What's part of the game? What isn't? Exactly. Um, this is definitely, oh, Matthew in the chat room says, Netflix Punisher. That's absolutely coming out um, next week. I believe. Yeah, can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah. It looks so good. They they had a great build. Let me ask you, Matt. Soundtrack. If if you had to pick between two, would you see The Punisher or would you see um, The Justice League? Because they come out about the same time. If you could only pick one to see, and we'll see what Matt says in the oh. time room when he actually catches we'll up to this particular. Catches into when it. he catches up to it, <laughs> this yeah. delay thing, and it's not even a censored thing, so I could show the boob and cover it up real quick. Sorry, man. I, I guess you could to. type it in. That would be an interesting because all these other letters would come up. Try it. Uh, okay, sure. We'll, we'll, we'll ask him because he's like, it, there's a slight delay. But, okay. a slight delay, but if anything, just right. If you could delay, yeah. only see one. All right. In the meantime, while he's typing it up, let's keep Which talking about you, game, game you night choose. teaser. So I liked it. I liked it, but I was wondering where it was going because it reminded me of a, a combination of horrible bosses because it had a, a, some of the same actors in it. It's in and it's all if I'm right, and this is not to be mean, but all like white people, white people problems. You know, white people getting in trouble, white people trying to get out of trouble. You know, um, I, I oh, yeah, wrong button. Oh, sorry. Oh, I pressed the wrong thing. Yep, that was the one to show. Oh, well. we could do a quick, quick continuation if you want. Well, no, no, it says done, done. So. I, I have no idea how to bring it up. So sorry, folks, if you watch the live version. Oh. I pressed the wrong button. I think I pressed the end go, button by accident. Go ahead and click done and just do a real quick. So there you go. Real quickie live. Sorry, guys. Go to photo video. Oh, you want to do it again? Yeah, just do it real fast. Okay. I don't know that we can go live again. I think we'd have to stop the stream. Do we? And then press the stream again. Uh, do you I, want to pause or do you want to No, no, it's fine. We're, we're at the end anyway. So okay. It's not that big of a deal. Like it's just it's just try to connect, but it can't because there's a new like code for it. And uh, this is a bunch of nerdy stuff that the people who are listening to this probably don't care about. Um, but that was our attempt to, to actually talk to people, and that's what <laughs> that's what we get for it. Um, so the last trailer, of course, Early Man. No, it's obviously very Wallace and Gromit uh, yeah. inspired animation look, style, and everything. Yeah, uh, it's, it's the same producers. It was it's probably just, something that was started like ten years ago because uh, stop motion animation takes forever. It does. Uh, but it looks cool, LHS. So, of the three, which would you choose to? Which one? Like, which one's the winner for you? Honestly, I'm gonna go with Game Night. Me too. <laughs> Game Night. Yeah, it was fun. It would look interesting. It looked different, and it had a bunch of funny, very funny people. So, I, I that's my choice as well. Um, I'm sorry, folks, for <laughs> who are watching live, or even listening to this recorded. Um, slight dark inquirers, but it was still a fun episode for me. Um, but that's kind of it for the show. Game Night One or Movie Trailer Showdown. Hope you guys enjoyed watching and listening. If you want to show the podcast in any way, shape, or form, of course, you enjoy it. You know where to find us at. Do it at geekbytespodcast.com slash support. Uh, thank you very much for listening and for watching. Uh, for Geek Bytes Podcast, I'm Ramon Mejia. I'm Edgardo Costa. And remember, folks, to go geek out about something. Goodbye, everybody. Number nine. There you go.